Okay, so there's a couple things I want to cover with you guys, or at least that we have gone over. It, obviously, before break, ladies and gentlemen, we talked about the sine, cosine, and tangent function. And then, obviously, returning, we went over cosecant, secant, and cotangent. So there's a couple things I want you guys to kind of recognize with all these graphs. Notice that of each of the parent functions, the equations, and then I graph them with the transformations. Notice how A, B, C, and D are all in the exact same location, right? A and D are outside the function, and B and C are inside the function. That goes back to chapter one that we talked about, transformations of functions. Same thing, it was just A, B, H, and K, right? But remember, A is going to be your vertical stretch and compress with the re or with the reflection of the x-axis. B is your horizontal stretch and compression or a reflection of your y-axis. And then C was your horizontal shift, um, and D was your vertical shift. So exactly what we have already covered, all right? And again, I, or I labeled those over there that we are summarized them over there. So I just want to kind of go back and talk about sine and cosine real quick, just so we can kind of get some familiarity with them. Um, remember the sine and cosine graphs, guys? I only, for all the graphs actually I did, I only did the initial period. So we'll look at later this class period, we'll look at like the graphs expanded to see more periods, Douglas. And so just remember that these graphs continue indefinitely to the left and to the right. Um, but we're only taking a snapshot of the graphs. And by looking at the snapshot, we can look at a couple things. First of all, we recognize that the graph um, repeats itself a distance of 2 pi. So it's going to keep on continuing this pattern every 2 pi. So therefore, that's what we call the period. If we do have a b, then the, period, the new period is going to be 2 pi divided by b. The amplitude, which is again a new vocabulary, is the half distance from the max to the min of, um, of a graph. So therefore, that's just going to be the absolute value of a. Notice how only sine and cosine have an amplitude. Okay? And the reason China that sine and cosine are the only ones that have an amplitude is because they're the only ones that is bounded. Right? They only, these are the only ones that have an absolute max and absolute min. All the, other, all the other graphs that we look at are unbounded, so they're not going to have an amplitude. Uh, the domain, again, is negative infinity to infinity because it um, extends indefinitely. The range, because it's bounded, goes from negative 1 to 1. And the function is odd. And the reason, again, remember its function is odd because you can reflect this graph about the y-axis as well as the x-axis. All right. So when we look at cosine to sine, you can see that cosine and sine look very kind of similar. If I just really just took cosine and like shifted it over a little bit, it would look just like the sine, right? And we'll learn about that later as far as how much you need to shift um, to, for cosine to look just like sine. The really the main difference with cosine is cosine is even, meaning the graph is reflective about the y-axis. Okay, and we'll, that's going to become important. That is going to come up later. Um, the last thing actually I'll just mention is notice how sine and cosine change from um, increasing, then decreasing, and then increasing. Like it's just like a nice wave, right? Increasing and decreasing, increasing and decreasing. Okay, so now we move to the tangent, and the main important thing with tangent is just notice a, b, c, and d are still again in the same spots. The period, though, has now changed. Instead of it taking 2 pi for the graph to repeat itself, that has now been graphed into pi. And then also, like we found out on our warm up, we can have undefined values. And when we have undefined values, we create them with asymptotes. And that's where the graph is going to approach. The domain, then, is going to be all real numbers except for where the asymptotes are. So what we need to do is find an asymptote and then find the distance between each of those asymptotes and add a very, and um, add that distance times a variable, which we'll talk more about the how to write the domain in a little bit. Um, obviously, the range is negative infinity to infinity, means the graph is unbounded. And then also look at like tangents always increasing. It's always increasing. It's always increasing. Then we like it to repeat itself, and again, it's always increasing. Uh, for the next two, oh, tangent is also odd. It's reflected about the x and the y axis. Um, for cosecant and secant, I graphed the sine and cosine graph are part of this, so you guys could see how they look. But they're really not a part of the graph. Really, the part of the graph is the solid lines. But what you can see is cosecant, remember, cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. If we said the sine you know, from the unit circle is like the y-coordinate, cosecant is 1 over y. So since they're, they're reciprocal functions, you can kind of see how these graphs relate. They're kind of like the mirror image, right? It's kind of like flipped over, right? Did you guys kind of see that? And then in addition, if sine is 0 at pi, well, then 1 over 0 would be undefined. So therefore, there's an asymptote. So every single time there's an intercept of sine, that's going to be an asymptote of cosecant. Again, the a, b, c, and d are the same. The period it takes 2 pi for it to repeat itself. The domain is where all the asymptotes are going to all real numbers except for where the asymptotes occur. 
And then the range, we're going to have to use that union again because the graph is unbounded, goes down to negative infinity. It does have a max, but it's not an absolute max anymore. It's now a relative, right, or a local max. And then there's nothing going on here, so we have to jump back up to 1 and then go up to infinity. Okay? And this is odd, just like sine. Sine and cosecant, reciprocal functions, they're both odd. Secant is really the exact same thing. And again, secant, if you just shifted secant over, you would have cosecant, right? So it's kind of like how sine and cosine are related. Secant and cosecant are related. This is just the reciprocal of the cosine function. Same thing applies. Everything is all the same. You know, um, obviously, the asymptotes are a little bit different. And then this one is even. And then last but not least is we have the cotangent function, cotangent function which is the reciprocal of tangent. Um, and this one, just like tangent, then has a period at pi. And therefore, if you have a b, you divide it by b. So the domain is going to be a little bit different. It is unbounded. And cotangent, just like tangent, is also odd. And then I just wanted to summarize all this, because guys, this is what we covered in chapter 1. This is no different. Okay? So even though we're dealing with kind of new graphs, the transformations are the same. The only thing I'm adding is new vocabulary for period, which is how long it takes the graph to repeat itself, 2 pi over b. Um, as well as amplitude, the half distance of the max and the min, which only goes for sine and cosine. But if any, anything else, if you're asked for like the vertical stretch, compression, um, then you still use the same stuff we've done before. Also, phase shift is our new term that we'll be using um, for C instead of horizontal shift. And then also tra vertical transformation or vertical translation is often used instead of a vertical shift. And then last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, is B stinks, right? Remember I made like a bit, like we got to remember this. And this is the last time B stinks is going to come up, at least for instruction. But we got to remember, when we have a B and we have a C, we have to make sure we set it equal to 0 to solve or just say x equals C divided by B, because that affects the shift. OK? So that is your summary of our six trigonometric graphs. Yes? I forgot the negative, didn't I? There you go. Now we're good. Thank you. So there's no amplitude for anything other than sine and cosine? Nope.